Hi, this is Julia Bell, and today I'm going to talk about some basic Linux commands. I'm working in Kali Linux, so we'll begin there. A few of the commands that I want to be looking at, beginning with date and calendar. Type in the word date, and it gives me the current date. To backtrack just a second, I am working in the terminal application in Kali Linux. I actually got to this point by clicking on applications at the top, and from the list I chose uh, the terminal application. Notice I typed in the word date. It gives me the current date and time. Another function that's useful is calendar or cal. If you just type calendar, it's going to go with the current month and it's going to highlight the current day. Now if I want to see the next month, for instance, I could have typed calendar 04 2015 to access the calendar for April of 2015. To look at the year 2014, I bring up the entire calendar for the year of 2014 by typing cal space 2014 and it's going to bring that up. I want to show you a couple of other useful commands. If you're a DOS user, you remember the, word, the command directory or DIR. It still works here in Linux. However, you don't get the full features that Linux can offer by using this command, so I want to show you the two differences side by side. Here's the DIR command. Now let's try the ls command. ls. It's going to show me those same files. Notice the difference. When you do ls, which is native to Linux, it's going to give you some definition. For example, the blue for instance, my directory is a directory. It's a grouping of files inside a folder. The white my file, for instance, is actually just that. It's just a file. The green, these are all executable files. The red are going to be zipped or archive type files. So immediately you can see that Linux is being very helpful to help you notice the different file types right out of the chute. So again, blue is directory, green is executable, red is a zipped or archive type file, white is just your normal files. So that's very helpful. I'm going to show you something else. ls space dash al. Okay, this is still a directory listing of the files in the current folder. Some of these you didn't see earlier, so that's pretty cool. Go back to some of the ones you did at the top. I scrolled up using the scroll bar on the right. It tells me on the left, D, actually tell me that it's a directory. So that's very helpful to know. You've got your read, write, executable, read, write, executable. Notice this one. Example. It is not a directory. Read, write. It is an executable file. This is true. Number one, it's green. The blue here, desktop, it is a directory. I'll scroll on down and look at some more. Uh, hello user, for instance, gives me the date here it was created, the time, or the last date it was actually accessed or changed. So hello user is not a directory and it is an executable file. A lot of great information can be found here. Okay, man space ls. If you knew the exact what page you wanted, you could have went, but I don't. I just know I want to look up how to use the ls command. So man space ls gives me all the directions and options for the list directory contents command. Very, very handy. I'll use the scroll and scroll down. I can see more options. I can scroll back up. Notice here, when I am finished and I have the answers, I will hit the Q for quit and I'm back to where I was. If I wish to go back and look at something else for the manual, uh, for instance manual, let's try Cal for calendar. Gives me the display options for calendar. That's kind of handy. I will quit because I'm happy with what I've found out. Another useful command, ping. If I know that I want to ping uh, Google, I can type that in. Would it be helpful to do www.google.com? Sure. Is it always necessary? No. 
I've got it and it's in a perpetual loop it's going to keep going until you stop that control Z you can try all the usual things Q Z whatever but control plus the Z is actually going to stop that otherwise it's going to keep going kind of like the Energizer Bunny now if I want to clear all this off the screen I have two options I can do the good old-fashioned DOS command of clear works perfectly start that again so you can see get it good and full of stuff remember how to end that control plus a Z will stop that now I want this all to go away I could type the word clear that would work or I can do control plus L that's a shortcut to clear the screen sometimes if you're working on things you want to clear off the excess so you can see what you're actually working on and make it nice and if you're also recording the screen like I am sometimes you just need those other things gone now I want to talk about who what where when these are kind of a collection of things that are interesting I'm gonna try PWD this is going to show me the name of the current directory what directory I am in and I am in root so this is true another one that I like where is PWD it's going to give me the full path to the directory that I'm currently in so that can be helpful another helpful command is free free is going to show the free system memory and the allocated and buffers and so many great things shows here the swap memory I've got the free memory the shared so I type the command free F-R-E-E -E. I want to look at uptime the average time uh, amount of time it's been up how many users are on the load all that kind of things I'm just working in a sample Kelly Linux machine on just a personal computer so not a lot going on in my machine right now another command is history this is going to show a list in order based from most recent backwards of the commands that I have typed well what did I type earlier it was inspired but I don't remember here's a way to go back and look there's also a lot of other nefarious uses for this but we'll stay with the high ground for right now but that's the history command P S this is going to do a snapshot of the current processes you know what's running right now so you're seeing I've done bash and I've done ping and I've done su again not a lot going on on this machine right now who am I who's currently logged in this is true I am logged in as root another command it's just a single letter W W tells me the list of current system users and it's true root is logged in and the different systems that I'm logged in I did do a TTY and left that active and I'm on the regular system so again that is true as well if I wanted to do logout logout would log the current user off the system and allow you to log in as a different one I don't want to do that right now top top this is going to display the top system processes that are going on right now I can scroll down through those commands on the right uh, the PID number the user it's going to be a second column from the left the resources that it took so you can kind of scroll through those I'm going to go to the bottom okay and there's the actual top command itself shows up so again that's the top command it displays the uh, top CPU processes in this if I want to leave it I'm going to do the letter Q Q is in quit and it drops me out will actually help me to leave the top process okay SU 
I could do SU space and another username, whatever that would be, to run a shell with a substitute user or group ID. Again, I'm logged in as root, so I've got all the power I need. Sudo. I would use this to execute a command as another user. So if I'm logged in as root and I want to see if my user, Fred, has enough ability to run this, I might talk say so do user or so do Fred and changes him and run this command. Or if I'm logged in as Fred and he can't do the command and he has the ability to use root, he could do so do space root and log in as root, perform one command, then he defaults back to his normal abilities. Go back to root. Ah, uh, of course. CD space desktop. And again, since it does begin with a capital letter in Linux or Unix versions, they are cap sensitive, so do keep that in mind. I could also do a CD and the tilde. What the tilde is going to do is move to the user's home directory and I'm already in my home directory so there's really nowhere to go but I wanted to show the, you that. The home directory is usually the slash home slash and whatever your username is. Again I'm logged in as root so this is where mine is. If you wanted to make a new directory let's go to the manual. I'm going to do man space make dir for make directory here are some of the commands listed below, some of the switches that you could set. I will quit out of here. I'll just make one called new stuff. And I should have a directory. There it is on the right. And it's blue, telling me it's a directory. And it's called new stuff. That's all I did is mkdir space and the name of the directory I wanted to make. And it's there to make a new directory. In Windows you call these folders. If I wanted to remove a file or rename it, let's look at the manual again. RM removes files or directories. I'll quit. Two kind of uses for touch. I'm going to show you the manual on touch. Touch is used to change the file timestamps. There's also some folks that use touch to create files. So it's kind of two schools of thought. What I found is I can type touch, the name of a file, for instance, let me show you this. Let's do an ls and I want to show you some of the files I've got out there. Remember the ls space al is going to give you more details. Let's look at, here we go, hello op. Notice this, March the 22nd, 1531. That's the current time that I last touched that file. Actually, I did the same command on it. So we're going to do this. So I'm going to do a touch. Hello op. And it's going to look like nothing happened. But what happened is I altered the date and time on that file to the current. I'm going to do um, an ls space dash all and we're going to go back and look at that file again. Notice it changed. To do the touch new file and you notice I created a new file. I can now go out there and I can edit that file. Or it'd be a great one to remove. But I can show you something else kind of cool while I'm here. Let's wall that file. By typing wall, this is a way that folks used to send messages to all users. But I'm going to use this to actually post the contents of this file up on the screen right now. I just type wall and the type of that name of that file. If you wanted to look at my hello op, for instance, 
type that in. And you'll notice it really is a Python file. And the bash, a lot of people call that pound sign and the exclamation point. They call that the shebang line. You'll hear that a lot. And folks who are really serious about scripting, that is called the shebang. But so it's got the shebang line and it's got print hello world. Most typical program, everybody in this world has heard of hello world in many, many languages. So I did the wall space hello op for the name of the file and it shows me the contents of that file. Let's go back and remove that. RM new file because I didn't have anything in it anyway. Boom. New file gone. Command CP. CP is copy. So you could do copy space my file your file. With my file being the source and your file being the destination. Unless you tell it differently, it's going to be in the same directory. So you would have to include a path with my file and or a path with your file to send it or to receive it from some place else. But CP is copy. I'm going to go to the manual for this one. This is called eject to remove removable media to actually eject that. Maybe we're talking a USB drive or a DVD or a CD. Manual list floppy disk, tape, a jazz drive, a zip drive. And before you laugh, iOmega has got into the storage industry, especially even for the home, a pretty good couple of storage units. So they've got some mass storage units. They are out there again and they are hopping. So don't discount that stuff yet. There's some cool things out there that even work with VMware as a really good starter point of a SAN that's affordable. Okay, we looked at jet, eject. I'm going to quit out of here. Another thing to look at is sleep. And you guessed it, it puts the computer to sleep. Saves your battery time. Don't need to do that because I'm demoing and you would see me go away. Another thing you could do shut down from the command line to shut down. Again, I'm recording, so I'm probably not going to execute that. Another way you could shut down is init zero or initialize zero. That says, out of here, close it down. Here's one you don't see maybe as frequently, but init space six. This says, please restart everything. So it would restart my Kali Linux, and we'd boot back up and start all over again. Again, init zero is shut down and it six is restart so I'd restart the system hope these have been some helpful Linux hits I look forward to seeing you later have a great day